Hi, today is the first class on this course that we have under the NPTEL program called combustion. So we will just start with the course outline. The first thing that we will do is a little bit of thermodynamics. But what are we going to get out of here is essentially the adiabatic adiabatic flame temperature. Number two is we do some chemical kinetics. This is going to tell us how fast. How fast? Well, I'll explain these things as we go along. Uh, number three is some mass transfer definitions. So this will lead to the fixed law. Number four, conservation equations. Um, so here the most important thing that we will bother about is species mass conservation and then we will also worry about uh, mixture momentum mixture energy and uh, what is called as multi component diffusion all right. Then we will go through what is called as Swab Zeldovich formulation number 6 we now do what is called as Rankine Hugonio Hugonio relations seven premix flames premix flames and uh, diffusion flames. So here we do two things one is what is called as the Burke Schumann problem and then we will do droplet burning and uh, then we do a few few more things uh, which is first of all we do partially premix flames premix flames and uh, then we do uh, turbulent turbulent flames so that means if you now go back we can we can now um, realize that uh, these are laminar so here we will do uh, a overview and this would be uh, both premixed and diffusion flames and uh, let us say we do a little bit of uh, solid propellant combustion um, spray combustion thirteen um, detonations uh, in this essentially we restrict ourselves to what is called as the ZND model 
and uh, lastly we do some combustion instabilities all right. So this is like what is planned for about a 40 hour lecture and uh, this is a little bit ambitious for a 40 hour lecture uh, we will try to squeeze as much as we can but if we can't we will let it overflow all right so we may not really finish everything by about 40 hours that is the first thing. The second thing is this is a course that is pitched at the level of a senior undergraduate to a first introductory graduate level course in combustion all right. So that is that is kind of like we are not talking about very advanced level combustion at the same time we are not talking about something that is too introductory all right. So we, we have to get reasonably mathematical here to get the equations in shape therefore uh, somebody wants to actually get into some kind of a computational approach or a theoretical approach you should be in a position to uh, do this from this course onwards. So that is essentially how this is uh, shaped up all right with this we should now start thinking about what we are getting into combustion what does that mean right. So what is what 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 is what does it ring in your minds when you say when you think about combustion obviously it is something like a, a a fancy technical sounding term for something that we are very familiar with in our daily lives essentially the process of burning if, if, if you can say that you would not be too far off the mark okay you would have covered most of what uh, we, we come across then the question is what is burning all about all right. So I mean we have to first of all understand these things in simple English right so combustion is like let us say approximately the process of burning and then we have to think about what is burning all about. So we now start thinking about what we are familiar with when it comes to burning okay what are the most familiar uh, situations when you come across burning anybody. No, no, no. Like, practically, when do you come across burning? Match, match, match walks. Okay. Anybody else? Stoves. Stoves. Okay. Forest fire. Flash fire. Forest fire. Furnace fire. Forest, forest. Forest fire. Oh man, he's a jungle guy. <laughs> okay. So forest fires. Okay. Then. Jet engines. Jet engines. This is like a aero, aero guy. Okay. So he wants to go. Uh, jet engines. Okay. So let's now let's start listing these things. So combustion is like process of burning. So example match matchstick okay um, or what else was the answer uh, the stoves forest forest fire and uh, jet engines okay anybody else wants to say anything more I see engines rocket engines jet engines okay fine so I see engines uh, okay anybody else wants to say anything more that you come across candle huh so somebody is very romantic there <laughs> okay so <laughs> candle candle flame okay candle flame so now you see we are we are now getting into uh, some jargon so on the one hand we have something called a flame on the other hand there is something called a fire okay these are things that we come across what do, what do they mean in, in plain English flame and fire are they different or the same can we say that by flame we mean steady steady fire steady fire yeah it's fire which is steady not increasing in okay in so well in technical combustion literature 
uh, even unsteady flames or flames <laughs> okay and uh, fire is typically something that spreads uh, uh, more or more or less in an uncontrolled fashion but you could have essentially something like turbulent flames that are there in furnaces for example like very large furnaces or um, oil fired um, furnaces again okay uh, so may, or coal coal furnaces many of these things actually have very large fires right so or, or what we what we think of them as fires but they are also typically classified as flames but the steady flame that you call as flame is something that you can for, for example associate with like a candle so you, you light up a candle and um, it just stays steady unless um, you now see how big that candle is or how long it has been burning right. So for example let us say you are, you are burning the midnight oil for an exam the next day and then you had a power cut and you had to light up the candle to keep going on all right uh, somewhere, somewhere through the V hours you are going to now have the candle begin to flicker what is going on there has the flame become fire. What is going on is you now have a buoyancy driven flow that is like the, the, uh, the candle vapor mixes with air and burns and produces products that are hot and because they are hot they go move upwards and they begin to actually oscillate because you, you are now beginning to have some sort of a instability in that flow of hot gases that percolates back to the flame okay and the flame begins to start shaking. All right, so it is an unsteady flame there at that, at that time it is not necessarily fire yet at all okay. So what are we then if you want to now analyze this kind of situation so that we now just talked briefly about how a candle works right uh, but how, what happens in a jet engine for example let us say consider the other, other situation okay. So uh, if you now look at a candle let us suppose you now can draw a wick over there and you now have a flame and this could be moving back and forth okay uh, in an unsteady fashion but essentially you are having a wick in which you now have fuel coming out in vapor form ultimately uh, and then mixes with the oxidizer that is around and then you now have a flame there okay. But if you now look at a jet engine uh, let us get a little bit more specific maybe we talk about uh, what is what's a favorite jet engine for you uh, anybody. Turbo, turbo jet. Okay, so say turbo jet. Now, of course, I'm interested only in the combustor of the turbo jet. I'm not interested in the compressor and the turbine and so on. So, therefore, I'm I'm going to draw some sort of a schematic of how this looks like. Oops, let's see how this how this comes about. So, you now have a fuel injection and then a swirler over there, and then you have a flow that's coming out. I made a mistake. Uh, let me just redo this. Um, so let us say I, I and then I had a a swirler box into which and they have an atomizer, and then um, yeah. Right. So I had a airflow come over here. This is fuel and uh, you had the air come also on the sides. So this is like what is called as primary air this is like secondary air that is like dilution air and so on. Um, so you now have a flame that is sitting there okay highly turbulent flame right. Right. So what are we what have we been talking about for the basic elementary processes that constitute combustion. So to give you an example of what the kind of answer I am looking for, for one thing you have a flow, you have a flow of air through this okay and then you have a fuel injection that means the fuel has to flow through the fuel nozzle and get out there all right and then what do the fuel and air do. Not yet. They mix. they mix, right? So one of the things that we are talking about is flow. The other thing that we are talking about is mixing, and the third one is 
reaction. There is a chemical reaction that goes on. All right. So effectively, we are talking about three major things that we should be keeping in our minds when we are looking at combustion. So combustion basically means flow, mixing, and chemical. reaction all right so in in a uh, little bit more technically sounding jargon we could say this is like convection diffusion right and reaction well we are talking about the three basic things Okay, so you could you could argue, well, I could have convection and diffusion. Would that be combustion? Probably not. Okay, I'll, I'll come to that next. Then, can we have diffusion and reaction? Would that be combustion? Maybe yes. Can I have convection and reaction? Would that be combustion? Maybe yes. So we are looking always at chemical reactions being present when you're talking about combustion. Right. So from the question that he asked, I kind of take what I want <laughs> okay so what kind of chemical reactions are we talking about when you are talking about combustion any chemical reaction exothermic, exothermic. exothermic. what did you say oxidation exothermic. oxidation what else fast oxidation. fast oxidation so there is a person back there who is not just sufficient uh, for him to be slow it should be fast why Huh? That would be an explosion. So then there is a chain reaction. Continuous. Otherwise, what happens? Can't you have then slow reactions that continuously happen? Should be extinguished. Flame will be extinguished. Why? Why would a slow reaction cause an extinction? The heat would be converted. Usually slow. You? Converted out before it preheats the mixture. That the heat would be convected out if it before it gets preheated. So, how does the heating happen in the first place? Does right. So, you have a, you have a exothermic reaction that is happening, and the heat could be getting convected out. That means it gets washed away. Okay. Before it can preheat what preheat the, the reactants to get up to this temperature at which they can react. So, how is this happening? Why? We use a burner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how is that actually getting heated up? So let us say we, let's say I had a flame right in front of me. Okay. How do I know that without seeing? Because the air and air and uh, the air and fuel don't have eyes to see, right? But how do they know that it is they, they are getting into a flame zone? Radiation and radiation and convection. Conduction. So essentially, what you're talking about is some kind of a heat transfer that happens to the. Um, the, the reactants in order that they actually get heated up to the flame temperature where they get in and start participating in reactions and constitute the flame right. So if you now have a reactant flow that is coming in it has to get heated up and get into the flame and then the flame itself happens and when the flame has happened its job is to actually heat up the reactants that are further coming in so that they will come and participate in the flame When the flame is there it now produces products that will go away right. So what is the flame now? It is a combustion zone. That is like twisting yourself right then I will ask you what is a combustion zone and you can say it is a flame right. Can we speak English like we do not yes. know anything about flames or combustion? The place where the reactions are, the place where the reactions are taking place. All right. So a flame or a combustion zone is nothing but a place where the reactions are taking place, nothing more. You see. Now what has happened is, so so let us just record this. So this could, the, now the diffusion here could also mean heat transfer, okay. Predominantly conduction, that is the reason why I am writing this under diffusion. Conduction heat transfer plus 
radiation all right plus some radiation so for example what is meant by radiation for example you can see the flame if it is like a um, diffusion flame it gives out light a lot more than a premix flame like an orange flame that gives you a lot more light back in those days they used to use, use combustion for lighting okay at night so that is essentially coming out by radiation but most of the energy that is being consumed is released in heat rather than by light so it is not significant uh, under, un, unless, unless you are looking at some specific situations which we will talk about as we go along but but you look at the factor the, the, the fraction of energy that is involved in the uh, radiation heat transfer versus the conduction heat transfer. So, uh, my question is the light uh, being generated is because of the uh, heat the thermal, thermal, thermal fine 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 let us not worry about how the light came up okay. So we, we have this going on and uh, so we have the convection going on and the reactions going on we also notice that these should be fast exothermic. And typically you want to have fast exothermic chemical reactions mainly when you when you deal with gases gaseous reactants because when you now want to have reactions happen molecules have to collide okay. So if they if you now have two solids where you do not have a mobility between the molecules of the solids it is very difficult for them to collide in the first place okay to a lesser degree similarly with liquids but with gases and as you pressurize more and more okay the molecules can actually interact bombard against each other much more so you you are able to actually get fast chemical reactions mainly with gases therefore most of combustion not all okay most of combustion is essentially happening in gas phase now does that make sense I would I would like to counter that by saying no 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 most of the combustion actually happens not in the gas phase because I use my uh, I use petrol in my uh, in my car I use the diesel in my uh, in, in a bus okay uh, these are all liquids I could be burning wood or coal which are all solids yeah so these are typically what is what, what are used for getting energy for transportation or otherwise what are we talking about gaseous they have to vaporize because they just simply do not withstand the temperature in the first place of, 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 the, of the burning so they vaporize the actual combustion reactions that are happening are happening in the gas phase most of the time for most applications all right. So those are the ones that are significant so what has happened in the last um, let us say half an hour we have made tremendous progress okay we, we, we were just barely beginning to spell the word and uh, here we are talking significantly about convection diffusion chemical reactions. So what this means is you need to know fluid mechanics okay you need to know um, transport phenomena. and uh, at least a bit of chemistry right so at least a bit of chemistry so you need to know a minimum of three basic subjects before you can actually get to doing combustion okay so no wonder you cannot do this too quickly in your career so you have to wait until you are like a senior undergraduate or a let us say a, a starting graduate student before you can master some of these things to some extent before you can actually do combustion. Good. <coughs> then let us look at what we are supposed to do right. So the first uh, topic is actually speaking thermodynamics applied to combustion okay so we are not going to really do combustion itself we are going to do basically be doing thermodynamics 
but applied to combustion. The goal being we will now get what is called as the adiabatic flame temperature that means the best estimate for the temperature without any heat losses this is essentially what, what you what you are looking for all right. And when you now look at the and this is not going to tell you how fast things are happening thermodynamics always talks about changes okay from like an initial state to a final state or state 1 to state 2 in fact initial and final or even misnomers to be used because they have a connotation of time before and after thermodynamics just does not care about time at all it is it's only talking about a change from state 1 to state 2 all right and of course the, 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 the direction of increase in entropy is what is deciding what the uh, direction of change from path 1 to state 1 to state 2 is okay that is all thermodynamics can do for you. But if you want to now start worrying about how fast these exothermic chemical reactions are supposed to happen then you have to do chemical kinetics it is there is also something that you you are familiar with okay. But we will go through this and we will bring in some notation that is sort of like algebraic or trying to algebraize chemistry if you, if you will yeah. So we will try to do that and uh, plus also talk quite a bit about the, the uh, details of chemical kinetics where, where they play a role and so on. <coughs> then we have to worry about mass transfer definitions this is picking up a little bit on transport phenomena ultimately leading to what is called as fixed law that is involved in mixing uh, two, two species. So when we talk about species that is like a new term okay we are not talking about biological species but we are now looking at chemical species okay. So chemical uh, species simply means a particular compound or an element okay. Uh, so we want to now call, treat them in an algebraic sense call them like x or y and then uh, we want to call them a species as opposed to compounds and mixtures or something. So then we will be in a position to actually look at conservation equations. What we will now find is the there is a need for something called a multi component diffusion equation which is the multi component counterpart of fixed law. Because what we will note is fixed law holds good only for a what is called as a binary mixture okay that means you can have only two species in the mixture and if you want chemical reactions to happen between them that means one of them should be a reactant the other one should be a product okay it is not like two of them react with each other no <laughs> because any time you have a uh, bunch of reactants you also have to have reckon with, reckon with products right. Therefore that is a very very uh, restrictive situation for you so we will have to look at how the multi component diffusion uh, equation works out for a truly uh, multi component mixture multi component simply means more than binary more than two two species. Schwab Zelda which uh, is, is a is a new term for you uh, except I want to point out at this stage Zelda which is like a father of combustion uh, I should I should point out at this stage uh, a, a little bit of historical background okay. Um, combustion how old is it? 1.5 million years ago. Sorry. 1.5 million years ago. 1.5 million years ago. Okay. Uh, was was human be were, were human beings there at the time? Yeah. Yeah. They were. Yeah. Okay. So did, so they they discovered fire. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. The big bang. No. Yeah. yeah the. <laughs> the so you get you get you quickly get into this confusion. Like, do we do we have to consider combustion that happened before human beings discovered it or? after huh? so it has been around for a long time so right, right from the big bang maybe huh? if you want to if you want to call that combustion. Now I want to also point out that we are restricting ourselves to chemical reactions here that means we are looking at exchange of electrons from atoms and molecules okay whereas we are, we are not necessarily looking at nuclear reactions where you will have the nuclei participate in the reactions as well. Now these days uh, for example you look at the um, the the Hotel preliminary lecture at the 2006 combustion symposium at Heidelberg by uh, Ed Law he would now say all reacting flows including biological reactions should be combustion 
okay but that is not the conventional sense in which we, we know combustion. So typically we will be dealing with chemical reactions all right so I do not know if big bang included only chemical reactions or also other things but fundamentally we can imagine that burning happened even before human beings were around but one of the first things that human beings discovered is fire okay maybe before even inventing the wheel all right. So it has been around for a long long time what do we know about the science of combustion so this is technology so this is a classic case where technology precedes science you do something figure out how it works right but do not know why <laughs> that is the difference between how and why yeah. So what about the science what has been the state of combustion science over a period of time. That is that is like the progression of science all right but specifically the combustion science what have what have we known about combustion science over the period of time for example when you now look at uh, uh, how mechanics progressed you know that uh, with, the, with the advent of Descartes there was some progress with the, with, the, with the advent of Newton there was some progress and so forth all right. So what do we know about let us say combustion science. We made a good progress in the premix laminar premix flame uh, diffusion is when historical right okay so what has happened is bulk of the science for of combustion had to wait until significant progress had been made in any of these three fronts right that is fluid mechanics transport phenomena and chemistry it turns out for example if you look at transport phenomena all right so you look at uh, mass transport momentum transport energy transport right so you look at momentum transport this is due to a flow being viscous okay Newton figured this even in the later half of the 17th century or earlier part of the uh, 18th century but Fourier was the one who figured out in the earlier part of the 19th century the um, heat transfer heat conduction okay that is the energy transport it took further out for Fick to figure out the mass transport. So mass transport actually happened quite long, quite late in the game okay and then we had to worry about multi component diffusion and so on. So it, it took quite, quite a bit of time for this to happen and we are now already looking at later part of the 19th century okay. Chemistry so for a long time it has been alchemy <laughs> okay. So chemistry also started making strides only in about the 19th century later part or thereabouts putting all these things together it is only in the late 19th century that any combustion science ever pretty much happened of course you, you, can, or you can argue about this uh, significantly but it is, it is very very late in the game when, when compared to lots of other classical uh, mechanics related sciences okay bulk of the progress in combustion science has pretty much happened in the 20th century okay we, we are still very early in the 21st century so we, we cannot compare the bulk now with what happened in 20th century so 20th century is where bulk of the progress happened and interestingly towards the second half of the 20th century you now made strides in all three fronts in terms of approaches one of them is mathematical analytical okay there some, some progress was make, being made in the early part as, as well but you needed significant mathematical tools like asymptotic expansions perturbation me methods and so on which matured through application to boundary layers and all those things earlier on and then they were being, they were, they were being, uh, being applied later on in, in combustion and computational combustion has seen a huge um, investment of time and effort in the later part of the uh, 20th century and similarly in experimentation there is like a big uh, emphasis on laser diagnostics that has happened because we are essentially looking at things that are happening at the molecular level all right. The other thing that happens with combustion is the multi scales okay so the, the, the fluid mechanics part of it that is the flow part of it happens over a fairly large length scale 
okay it has to now go from this end of the combustor to that end of the combustor whereas the mixing and the reactions happen in much smaller regions and even in these smaller regions the mixing happens in a smaller region in a macroscopic sense okay but the reactions are happening in that region in a microscopic sense okay you are still you have to get molecules to mix with each other that means we are now trying to transcend between here and here we are trying to transcend from a continuum framework okay to a molecular level framework that is a little bit a little bit hazy right so we have to figure out how to handle these things together yeah so fundamentally you are now having a multi scale problem here and therefore doing combustion calculations or diagnostics is difficult you have to keep the big picture of the flow at the same time as looking at the molecular level processes okay that is very difficult and therefore combustion problems have eluded solution uh, very, very uh, for, for, for a long time it takes a lot of effort to get into combustion this is not to discourage you this is to actually encourage you uh, because this is, this is challenging stuff plus I also want to point out that looking at the future okay combustion is becoming very very significant okay it is becoming significant from uh, two counts one we have a energy demand that is growing in the human civilization and most of the energy in the foreseeable future of uh, let us say the next uh, several decades uh, like in our lifetimes is going to still come from combustion energy okay either fossil fuels or coal or some other things and of course when, when we are when we are done with burning everything that can burn we will still still find something more that will burn okay I cannot believe that combustion will come to an end in about 70 years or something like that when it actually started when we, when we do not know right so it, 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 would, it would happen right and it is going to happen more and more in the next few decades next several decades in fact okay so we need to be solving combustion problems for tapping energy from different sources uh, as I said uh, fossil fuels um, coal as well as now biomass okay so for example so that is like a new renewable energy that you can think about second thing is the pollution uh, and uh, environmental uh, problems that is like global warming and so on this is also caused by combustion so on the one hand combustion is required on the other hand combustion is bad so it requires combustion engineers for you to engineer your combustion in such a way that you get what you want and you do not you, you try to avoid what you do not want okay so that is that is the engineering that we have to do which means the combustion research and the engineering that we do now should be a lot better than what has been done before okay that means we need smarter people working in this area so because it is highly challenging and, and the, the practical challenges are a lot more therefore um, let, let us let us continue with where we were okay somewhere somewhere in there in the in the, the first half of uh, the 20th century we now have Zeldovich show up okay and he is like a leading figure in uh, in, in uh, uh, combustion in fact at, the, at, at every combustion symposium they all they give the Zeldovich medal for lifetime achievement uh, uh, for, for a combustion researcher that means like they give the best medal after Zeldovich okay. We do the Rankine Higonio relations those of you who have done gas dynamics uh, would have come across at least the Higonio part uh, when, when, they, when you're dealing with shocks all right. So what we want to try to do is something similar which means we now to try we now try to deal with flames as if like they are shocks okay what does that mean it is like we want to look at them as like surface of discontinuity so you have reactants on one side products on the side do not worry about what is happening inside okay you, you just have a discontinuity between the two separated by the flame can we analyze the situation like this without getting into the flame and we will find that it is not at the end of it we will find that it is not possible to avoid getting into the flame and therefore we will we will get into the premix flames we will spend quite a bit of time doing this we will try to find the laminar flame speed and, and then we will look at flame stabilization issues flammability limits ignition and quenching all these kinds of things over there uh, how to treat uh, flames globally when given a flame speed uh, and how the, how the flame speed should be computed in the first place. Uh, flame shapes versus flame structure and so on so I would like to distinguish these things as we go along 
then we do get into diffusion flames. So the name suggests obviously that when you now have uh, premixed flames the reactants are mixed by the time they get to the flame whereas in the case of diffusion flames the reactants are just mixing right as, as they are burning. So uh, they, are, they are kind of busy mixing as they are burning okay so that is what this is and then of course there is like a standard problem that was published in the first symposium of the combustion um, uh, first combustion symposium 1928 the, the celebrated Berk Schumann paper uh, we will we'll go through that and uh, then and we will we'll look at uh, further advances to this that has happened through years even as late as like uh, the 80s or 90s and uh, of course droplet burning is pretty important from a practical point of view and it is also uh, covered under diffusion flames these are uh, extra topics okay. So once you are able to do this much uh, then, then uh, you have to get into realities like these are like a little bit advanced. So we will talk a little bit about these as we go along maybe one lecture each or two lectures each and so on. Some of these are picked because uh, I do research in this area <laughs> okay. So uh, we can only talk about what we know <laughs> right so or what we what little we know. So uh, that that is what this is uh, all about. So that is how this this, uh, this is structured. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the books that we want to uh, go through. So, so uh, let us let us talk a little bit about books. The first book that I would obviously look at is uh, Williams. So uh, this is uh, combustion theory. This is I think the second edition came out in 1984. I will give you the publisher details and so on on the website that goes along with this uh, these videos. Um, but effectively I want to talk a little bit about these books now. Um, Williams is now the living father of combustion in some sense because uh, most of the advanced level graduate students could not have escaped his uh, textbook it is, it is a little bit dense uh, it is difficult to understand but you have to work on it okay and then you will reap rich rewards uh, once you do that. A, a, uh, a derivative uh, smaller book was also written by Emble Linian um, so this is uh, it's a Spanish name, so you, you have to pronounce it. I guess as Linian, with all this tilde and a um, and this, and this uh, accent here, and F. A. Williams. This is a fundamental aspects of combustion. This is around 1993 or thereabouts. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the specifics in the website. If you want to have light reading, I can suggest two books to start with. One is uh, W. C. Straley, which is Introduction to. Introduction to combustion, um, and uh, this this was around 1992 as well. And uh, then there is an Indian author, H. S. Mukunda. Mukunda. This is understanding combustion. Uh, this is actually an IIT Madras publication, as a matter of fact. Um, then there are more re much more recent books uh, that, that, are, that, are come, that, are, that have come up. So recent textbooks I would like to uh, list about a couple of two or three about three two or three uh, one of the most recent ones is CK law uh, this is combustion physics. The second is uh, maybe you can say Stephen Turns. S R turns. Uh, forget the name of the book. I can I can get back to you on that. Then there is a K K Kuo, which is uh, principles 
of combustion second edition. So these are more recent in the last uh, uh, 5 to 10 years and uh, these things are improving there are a lot more books that are coming up and uh, but, but they typically many of them focus on specific aspects of, 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 of the uh, <coughs> science because it is simply difficult for anyone to do all of combustion and uh, therefore uh, they, they typically focus on one particular aspect like maybe one book would be more on chemical kinetics the other book would be more on computations and so on okay. So there is a lot of um, books that are, have, that are there but um, I would like to, to start with maybe you can, you, can, you, can, you can look at some of these. I will follow uh, one or two of these books and I will try to point out which book I am following at, at a particular point okay so that you can go back and refer to it as you, as you go along. With this let us stop the uh, introductory lecture and uh, uh, we will pick up from the first topic the next class okay that is combustion thermodynamics and look at how to calculate the adiabatic flame temperature from there on thanks.